G'day all, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're talking about hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is base 16 counting system, as opposed to the way that we normally count, which is uh, decimal or base 10. And when we talk about base 16 or base 10 or binary or hexadecimal, um, we always mean the, the positional counting system. So they're all related, they're all pretty much the same uh, way of writing numbers. Uh, the only difference is that the possible digits and the base of the powers that the digits are multiplied by are different. So just a bit of notation here, you might sometimes see um, subscript base notation. Uh, this is just a nice way to write out numbers in different bases, so you'll see the base after the number as a subscript. So right here, something like this uh, might be a base 10 or decimal number. Whereas this one, a string of ones and zeros, followed by a little two, uh, that could be a binary number. And this final one, which has got a few letters mixed in there as well, uh, that could be a hexadecimal number, or base 16. Yeah, so you can write the base as a little subscript. Uh, just a quick comparison of decimal versus hexadecimal. Uh, if we've got the following string, 1092, and a little subscript of 10, well we know that that means 1092 in base 10, but um, this is what the digits mean. So the 2 actually means 2 by 10 to the 0. The 9 means 2 by 10 to the 1, or just 2 by 10. Sorry, uh, 9 by 10 to the 1, which is the same as just 9 multiplied by 10. Uh, the 0 means 0 multiplied by 10 squared, uh, which is just 0. And the 1 means 1 multiplied by 10 cubed, or 1,000. Whereas, if we've got exactly the same string of digits, only we've got the uh, hexadecimal suffix at the end here, little subscript uh, 16, then it's this power just here that changes. So the digits always mean the same thing, but the power that they're being multiplied by changes. So the 2 means 2 by 16 to the power of 0, which is actually um, just 2 again. You know, the uh, 1's column means the 1's column no matter what base you're in. Uh, the 9 just here means 9 by 16 to the power of 1. And the 0 means 0 by 16 squared. And the 1 means 1 by 16 cubed. So it's this 16 just here, or this 10. That's what the base actually means. Uh, if you're in binary, you know, if you're in base 23, it, it doesn't matter. That's what the base means. It means this power just here. Okay, so the number of digits in any base, this is the other thing that changes um, along with those powers. It's the number of digits that you can use. Uh, in any base system, uh, there are the same number of digits as the base itself, and the digits range from 0 up to the base minus 1. So we see something like binary. Uh, there's two different digits in binary, and there's 0 and 1. Uh, in quinary or quinary, which is uh, base 5, there's five different digits, and they're 0 to 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, yeah, if you're writing in base 5 and you use the digit 6, uh, it's just wrong. That would be the same as using a digit 2 or 3 in binary. It just doesn't exist. Uh, anyway, in the happy, friendly decimal, uh, there's 10 digits, and they range from 0 to 9. And in hexadecimal, or base 16, there are 16 digits, and they range from 0 to 15. So these digit ranges here, the um, highest digit is always one less than the base. Uh, so binary's got 0 and 1, decimal uses 0 to 9, but hexadecimal has the digits 0 to 15, which uh, sort of brings up a bit of a problem, and that is uh, what digit comes after 9. And the digits that we actually use for, for numbers, I mean, I'm not going to go into the history of them. I don't know the history of them, but um, I think they're Arabic numerals. Um, they're basically just weird little shapes. Uh, we're so used to seeing, you know, this weird little S shape to mean 5, but um, there's nothing really 5 about it. It's just a strange looking S. Uh, the thing that we've got to do is just agree on um, what digits we're using. Yeah, so what digits do they end up choosing for the numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15? Ah, uh, well, if they'd asked me, I would have suggested something like this. Um, I think that probably a 10 would be a sausage. I would have suggested that uh, 11 be something like a lion. You know, it's got to be quite different from a sausage, so I would have suggested that a lion is the best way to go for 11. Uh, now, 12, I mean, I don't want to start arguments, but that could either be a cloud or... Uh, if you think about it, that could also be a pile of mashed potato. 
would be 12. Now 13 could be a snake, but the thing about this, this particular snake is that he's got kind of a smile right there, and he's got the tongue coming out of the side of his head, so that might actually confuse people a bit. And I think that's probably why they didn't go with this counting system. It's probably that snake there. Um, 14 could be a superhero. I've just drawn one here. This is um, one with two noses. Other than that, it, it sort of resembles Batman, but he, he does have two noses. And finally, 15, I would suggest a robot. But if you note his wheels, he can actually only go sideways. Yeah, so this is actually a sideways robot right here. Yeah, so those would be the digits that I would have suggested. <laughs> Uh, as it happens, I wasn't there, and they didn't ask me, and it's probably a good thing too, because it would be quite hard to draw those when you're writing out numbers in hex, but what they decided to do, and I, I guess this is because they had already invented computer keyboards and typewriters, uh, they decided to use the first six letters of the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, E, and F, to represent digits for the numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, respectively. So we end up with uh, hexadecimal being a bunch of numerical digits and some letters. Uh, usually case is not considered, so lowercase in hex is exactly the same as uppercase in hex. And we get something like this. Uh, 1 FA5B could be a hexadecimal number. Or you can write out little words, so fab or abba or beef or feed. Uh, but the important thing to note is that, that that's not actually an F. Right there, that's actually the digit 15. Likewise, that's not an A. That's actually the digit 10. And this B right here isn't a B at all. I mean, it looks exactly like a B, but when you write it in a hexadecimal number, it actually means 11. Okay, so on to a couple of algorithms now to convert between these bases. Let's say that we want to convert between decimal and hex. So we've got a number written out in normal, you know, happy counting decimal. And it's, f what is that number? Four, four, 478,109 in decimal. We want to know what that is in hexadecimal. Uh, I use the same method here as I used to convert between decimal and binary. And it's basically just about a, a bunch of divisions and getting the remainder each time. So I draw out two columns, left and digit. And I put the original number, 478109, in the left column. And then I divide that by the base. So the base that we're converting to, that is, um, this time it's 16. In the previous shoot it was 2, but this time it's 16. So 478109 divided by 16 gives you 29881, remainder 13. So I write the quotient, which is the uh, answer to the division, the whole part of the answer, which was 29881. I write that in the left column. And the remainder, which was 13, I put that in the digit column. So this 29881 is the amount of the original number that we've still got to take care of. We've figured out that the first digit of the number in hexadecimal is 13, but this left column here is the amount left that we've still got to take care of. Yeah, anyway, I repeat the, the whole process, this time dividing 29881 by 16. And that gives us 1867, remainder 9. So I put the uh, remainder in the digits column and 1867 in the left column. And repeating the process again, we get uh, 1867 gives you 116, remainder 11. So I put the remainder in the digits column and the 116 in the left column. Repeating again, we get uh, 7, remainder 4. So 116 divided by 16 gives you 7, remainder 4. We put the 7 in the left column and the 4 in the digits column. Finally, when we repeat once more, um, you know, 7 divided by 16 is 0. So we put the um, remainder, which is 7, in the digits column, and the 0 in the left column. And when we get to a left, we know that... We, sorry, when we get to a 0 in the left column, we know that we're done. So that is almost our number. There is one extra step when converting to um, hexadecimal. And that is that we've got to swap the digits that are greater than 9 for their letters. So there was two digits there that were greater than 9. The 11 becomes a B, and the 13 becomes a D. And our final answer is that 478,109 in decimal equals 74B9D in hexadecimal. Easy as that. 
Yeah, if you're programming, if you're learning this for programming, um, you can often write in uh, you know C++, Java or C Sharp, uh, a little zero X beside your number, and uh, then the uh, the computer will read it as hexadecimal. Yeah, that's the hexadecimal suffix or prefix right there. Zero X seven four B nine D. Uh, the computer will read that as four seven eight one zero nine. Yeah. Okay, converting from hex to decimal. Uh, you can convert, you can convert from hex to decimal using the exact same algorithm specified above. Uh, yeah, you can't really because uh, if you type those divisions into a calculator, it's not going to give you the answer in hexadecimal. It's going to give you the answer in decimal, so it doesn't help. Um, yeah, most calculators. If you've got a calculator that you can just change into, um, you know, hexadecimal, like the Windows calculator can can write in hexadecimal. Um, you might want to use that, but usually this uh, next algorithm will be easier to convert from hex to decimal. So this is going the other way. Uh, let's convert 7abc9 in base 16, or hexadecimal, to its decimal equivalent. So what does that actually mean? 7abc9 in, uh, in decimal. The first thing I like to do is uh, write out the digits, nice and big, need a bit of room above them, and then we start by putting a, a 1 above the 9, and we multiply that by 16, and put the answer above the C. Then we multiply that by 16, and we get 256. So this is actually um, 16 squared. We put that above the B. Multiplying 256 by 16, we get 4096. And we put that above the A. And finally, multiplying 4096 by 16, we get 65536. So all that we've done here is written out the powers of 16 which is what these columns mean in uh, in hexadecimal. Uh, if this number here was in decimal, and we were writing out the powers, we would have written 1, 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000, since that's what the columns mean in decimal. But we're not, we're writing in hexadecimal, so we've written out the powers of uh, 16. Okay, the next thing that we've got to do is figure out um, what those powers multiplied by the digits are. So 1 multiplied by 9 is nice and easy, that just means 9. And the next thing is a little trickier, because you've got to remember that the C actually means 12. So 16 multiplied by 12 gives you 192. And that's what that digit there means. So a C, any C at all, in the second uh, column of a hexadecimal number will always mean 192. Uh, the next one is a little tricky as well, since we've got to remember that B actually is the digit 11. So 256 multiplied by 11 gives us 2816. And the next one, uh, A, means 10. It's the digit for 10. So 4096 multiplied by 10 gives us 40960. And finally, we multiply this last one by 7. So 65536, I forgot to put the multiply symbol in there. Uh, but that number there, multiplied by 7, gives us 458752. Good. Okay, and then the final thing to do is just sum each of those up. So, uh, 458752 plus uh, 4960 uh, plus 2816 plus, you know, 192 plus 9 gives you 502,729. So, uh, 7ABC9 in hexadecimal is exactly the same number as 5,000, I'm well, sorry, 502,729 in decimal. They mean exactly the same thing. It's the same value. Yeah, cool. Uh, long story short, exactly what did we do in that algorithm, or why does it work? Uh, we basically wrote the powers of 16 above each digit. Then we multiplied those digits by those powers, and we summed the results. So this is basically figuring out exactly what each digit means uh, in the base, and summing the results. Yeah, you could do exactly the same thing with a base 10 number if you felt like it, and uh, maybe that would show you kind of exactly how it works or what it's doing. But um, it's a pretty simple algorithm, you just figure out what the digits mean and sum them all together. 
Anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say on converting to and from hexadecimal or um, base 16 and decimal or base 10. And thank you for listening. See ya.